three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackie, who didn't do s***. This is the O-Line Committee. It's back at full strength. We back. got Booney. We got <laughs> Jeremiah, the road warrior, just going pro day to pro day. We're we're trusting Motel Ooh. 6 Wi-Fi right now, we think. Hey, it's a Homewood Inn and Suites, okay? Hey, it's Listen, a home to home, okay? Leave them alone. It's a we, home. We move up in home. the world. I don't, I've, I've graduated from the Motel 6s in the world. Also, I don't think I'd trust a Motel 6 in Fargo. Oh, no. For, but well, anywhere. I, don't, I mean anywhere is better than where I stayed two nights ago. Vermilion, South Dakota. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. Vermilion, South Dakota is not a fun place. It's not where you want to be. Like, I woke up. Brushed my teeth, did my thing, and I took a swig of the old tap water to like oh, rinse oh, my dude. mouth out, and I almost vomited. Oh, like legitimate oh was almost like no. oh, like I don't know how people drink this. This is poison. Oh. It's just poison. <laughs> this is poison. Population population eleven thousand eight hundred. When do you you got to be careful with those like ten to eleven thousand or or fewer population. And it's a university. Cities, and it's a university. So it's all kids. Like, dude, it's bad. Like that sounds awesome. There, I don't know what you're dude, talking about. <laughs> ten thousand, you want ten thousand people, all students in one city. <laughs> sounds like the place where you want to find next. yourself. Not There's where you want to find good, yourself. Some good chain restaurants in Vermilion South. Okay. Oh, there's got to be, be an Applebee's. There's got to be. Is there a Chili's in Vermilion? P.F. Chang's. Come on, give me something. Applebee's. Someone Applebee's? Someone had an Applebee's experience recently. Dude, went last night. <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. The kids were like, Dad. Can we go to Applebee's? And I was like, "Yes, we can, dude." It was. We went crazy. I ordered every appetizer, and I because I, I got there before my wife did, and she got and she walked in just as they were like putting twelve plates on the table, and she was like, "What the fuck did you order?" And I was like, "Why are, why are there, why are there four, forty-eight mozzarella sticks right it was now?" Awesome. It was so much fun. But uh, Jay, NDSU. Excited? Yeah. What's up? Oh, dude, it's going to be great. Yeah. I mean, Fargo's facilities up here, North Dakota State's facilities rival Power 5 facilities. Really? I mean, they've got a beautiful indoor. They built a brand new practice facility. They've got multiple outdoor fields, one grass, one turf. I mean, the run that they went on from the early 2000s up until just recently has been I mean, as much of a dynasty of Alabama. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, they were just winning natties. At one point, I think they had like a 28-game win streak. Like, North Dakota State was the pinnacle of FCS football for a very long time. They've just recently been upseated by South Dakota State. So, yeah, the facilities here are great. Um, obviously, Coach Entz left. Uh, he's now the defense coordinator slash assistant coach at USC. But Coach Polisek's here now. And, uh, I mean, they're just – they have a history of not – having a big drop off when new coaches come in and he's been here before and he's an Iowa guy. So he's a Midwest guy. So I'm excited about it, but yeah, we got a client Jalen Sundell up here, uh, who's going to be running well. I know you've got another guy, Jake oh, Kubis yeah. from your Kubes. gym. So we got two O linemen that are, that are running here and shoot dude, Ohio state, or I'd say North Dakota state has put more offensive linemen in the draft over the last four or five years than most big 10 schools. Uh, that's true. They've I mean, had a lot all the way back. Dylan Radins was a mm -hmm. second round pick in 2021. Cordell Cody. Bolson in, in the fourth yeah, round in 22. Cody Mock, or excuse me, it was 20. Radins, uh, Cordell 21. Yeah. Cody Mock 23. 22. And then and then this one's Jalen Sundell. So it's it's a it's an it's a fun lineage up here. So you're so it's been what like a week and a half off and on on the road, two weeks on the road. Yeah, Where have you, so give us your, had, give us your Jeremiah map update. here. Well, yeah. I had Where surgery. in the world is Jeremiah? So I had I had surgery. Oh, that's right. People want to know, surgery. are you okay? You're moving yeah, your I'm arms. Good. I'm not supposed to be. I'm supposed to be in a sling, but <laughs> fuck that thing. Um, why? Just, dude, why? Dude, don't do that. You, you just had surgery. You should be in a sling. Stop. I feel like you should be. Stop. Stop. You sound, why are you fighting like the doctor's order? You sound like my wife. Leave me alone. So <laughs> okay. I had surgery right. after our pod last time. Last pod I was on, I went directly yep. to surgery. And then six days later, well, f four days later, I went cold turkey off the pain pills. Just hard stop, right? Because I wanted to be able to drive myself to Northern Iowa for the pro day. And so I went cold turkey. So I drove myself the Monday. So six days after surgery, I drove four and a half hours to Northern Iowa by myself. 
went to that pro day, drove back to Omaha that night, stayed in Omaha, got on a plane, went to, um, flew to Richmond, Virginia, and then drove two hours from Richmond to Lynchburg, was there for Liberty's Pro Day, which, by the way, if you haven't been to Liberty's campus, gorgeous. I mean, is, there an, is there an Applebee's one of the, on campus? One of the coolest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> doubtful. It's doubtful. Cheesecake. But it is one of the coolest campuses I've ever been around. Like, there's super a lot. Like, and it's one of those where you get around, and you're like, man, there's a lot of history here. Like yeah. Lynchburg, right? And you start that. diving deep into it about how... Like, it was a huge piece of the Civil War because it's right on the river, and so there was a bunch of, like, the commerce piece to it. And then you go see Liberty's facilities, jaw-dropping, really? jaw-dropping, beautiful facilities. And I started talking to people, like, what? what's going on here? They're like, oh, I don't know if you know this. Liberty is the largest online um, college in the country. What? Like, Ooh. they have, like, 50,000 students on campus. But there's over like a hundred thousand enrolled in the school when you add the online portion to it. And so what they've done is they've started using their athletic program as like recruiting for the online school program. Because think about it, if you're if you're a university, what's the best thing ever? Pay for it online. Zero right. overhead, yep. no liability kids on campus. And so, I mean, their football team going undefeated last year up until the bowl game was like the best thing that could ever happen to them because they're on national TV, they're at the bowl game. So they've just pumped a bunch of money into their athletic program and have this giant, beautiful indoor. Like, it's awesome. And so, I mean, I get to be, the, the compare and the contrast on this pro day circuit, right? You and I, the you and I dome. Sorry, Christian Boyd, shithole. Right, it's not a good place. Hey, his bench like, reps went viral on the internet. Hey, so as, as they 39, should. 38, 38, 38 times. Sorry, it's wild. Like, stupid. Woo. Good for you. That's buddy. a lot, by the way. 38. <laughs> yeah. He told the spotter yeah. to hop on a couple times too. Just, who else wants? Who Dude, else wants? Well, I was watching the like he repped. He got to 15 and was like hopping off the bench. I was like, oh, this is this is gonna work out for you. It's gonna be great. Well, I mean, let's go. Yeah. So there, that's like running on the old AstroTurf, like oh. the UNI dome, like yeah. half. Since it's middle of track season, half the dome is a track. The other half is the football field. And they just kind of inter interchange that, <laughs> right? And then you go to Liberty's beautiful, gorgeous, love it. Then I go to Vermilion yesterday. Oh. Their football field is held on, and I shit you not, Alex, by Velcro. What? Stop it. Velcro. Stop I was standing it. on the field, and I was looking down. I was like, there's a hole in the field. Like like on one of the like yard, I was like, "There's all," and I reach down into the hole and I kind of tug on it a little bit. What do I hear? And I look and I swear to God, it is velcroed. And all the scouts look around and like, there's like a support staff, like one of the girl like interns, like for that works in the football department. She was yeah. sitting there. And I like, I'm like baffled, right? I'm like looking around, like, is this real life? And she goes. We're getting new turf next year. And I was like, I would hope so. Like oh, it was atrocious, oh, dude. My I've God. never seen anything so before wait, in my life. Are you saying it's like the turf at the combine that they just laid out for the week and then they pick right back up, dude? Because that's think like res think think wrestling mats, but turf. Right, like you, you lay the mats down, and like, I don't even know how that's push, possible. You push them together yeah. at the yard markers, and you tap them down so it sticks to the velcro. But how do you like? I mean, this is a dumb question, but how do you do that for a full field and not have some little creases or somewhere bumps or yeah. creases yeah. Everywhere. safety issues? Dude, there's creases everywhere. It, like, I mean, I'm talking. So the like, field's not really legit. Like no, mm -mm. it's like carpet. it's off a little bit. You, it's you, I, 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 it's carpet. You're playing on carpet. It, you're playing on carpet. <laughs> like, it is horrible. Hey, it football world, we need to get this fixed. Sorry, we got to get that fixed. No, yeah, we do. Yeah, that's no, they're what getting the it That's what the Metrodome, this photo that's above a ding. for the Hey, that's audience. a ding. Making kids play on Velcro, that's a ding. Yeah. Thank Be you. Be better. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Be better. Be better. The turf monster Be better. Trip, tripping dude, somebody up during if, their process. I've seen the turf monster take some dudes out. I know you have too, Jay. Like, that's got to be brutal there. Just sniper in the bushes. Oh, God. But yeah, worst. so got done with Vermilion's Pro Day yesterday and then trekked through South Dakota through a, a wonderful spring blizzard storm and made it all the way up to Fargo in about six hours. And a bunch of the scouts, they were like, you going to Fargo? I was like, yeah. They're like, text me if you make it. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go guinea pig it. Sure. <laughs> and so I, I, I text my man. I was like, I made it. And they're like, oh, I had to pull off. I had to pull off at Brookings, right? I was like, oh, you guys are so soft. It's what four-wheel drives made for. <laughs> hey, what, was it snow or was it just rain? Oh no! It was 
blowing snow. and going. Oh and yeah, you got Brookings gotta, got like a ele- Brookings got like eleven inches of snow yesterday. Well, I was disappointed because I thought Minneapolis was supposed to get twelve, and as always, it turned into be something else, and it was just a rainstorm. So it was like sad. we got like seven inches of slush in Minneapolis, and then it turned to rain, and the rain so like is clearing out the snow. It's actually yeah. nice. I don't mind it. I By mean, the way, the, before we before, real, real quick, can I rebuttal the fact that I got dinged last week? Yeah, no, you like, can't. I had multiple people texting me no. being like, you, you, Sensitive. Got, you got dinged. If you don't play in the game, you get fined. You know that. If you don't dress, you get fined. You know that. Stop Oh, it. so I got a, okay, so I got a no stress, no travel fine. Pretty much. You didn't have to do the show. That's different. But you, you are also me sensitive. So therefore, oh that's no, because we spell. see. Look, there no, 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 it is. No, <laughs> that is a false spell. It was I a, told it was you. You said I got no stress, Stop. no travel. Stop. Stop. You Sorry, said man. I said he was going to get like this. So I should get another ding for calling it. Like, dude, you're about to get it with an ultra oh, in a minute. Self suck. Fair. That's fair. I was right. I knew it would you happen did, like this. You did, you did call. I go, Jay's going to freak out when he finds out we find him. He's you like, called it in yeah. advance, 100%. We know the rooms well, okay? We know our shit. friends. It's horseshit. It's horseshit. Huh? Well, hey, working for a living, getting fine. At least fine. you're in Fargo, buddy. We're proud of you. We're, ha- we're happy to have him we're back. Very he's, excited. He's back. He's, in, a, he's in some sort of a Super 8 or a Traveler's Lodge right now. In a Fargo, Homewood Minnesota. Inn and Suites. It's a home, home to suite. home, okay? <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Is there a fridge? Is there color? Yeah, I've got cable a full TV. little kitchenette. It's got, got the whole kitchen, dude. Like, is the there free thing. HBO? I it's love like when OTA they still advertise yes. free HBO. Yes, oh, yes dude. Free HBO is the best. You fall asleep watching some shitty movie. Yes. <laughs> dude, I, do, do you guys ever, like when I was a kid, my dad, uh, he, we'd go, he had family in Kankakee, Illinois, and so we'd make the trek, and sometimes we'd stay in a hotel in like Mauston, Wisconsin, and road trip it. And I remember distinctly watching a Monday night football game in some, it was called the pioneer motel. Ooh. And it was like, like, you know, the doors open from the outside and they had like pictures of 1800 pioneers and the carpet was all stained because it's the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. And do you guys remember that Monday night football game where buddy Ryan and Kevin Gilbride got in a fight on the sidelines for, they, they were the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. It was jets and Oilers. And they got no. into a, like, you got, audience can Google it or YouTube it, whatever. But I have these, like, weird, distinct memories of just road tripping throughout the upper Midwest, watching specific Monday night football games, Sunday football games. Road tripping, my main point is, road tripping is great. Jay has, like, two or three life memories that he has pulled from the last week and a half that yeah. will be seared in his brain forever. Yeah, for sure. You never you never forget the road, right? You're, you're in, I mean, I've put... Lots of miles on the truck, and I'm I'm actually planning another road trip with the family this summer. We're going to go through South Dakota, see Rushmore, go down through the Badlands, up into Jackson, go into Yellowstone. So I, I agree with you, Mackie. I love my wife and I are big road trippers. I think I think road tripping is a blast. Hell yeah, dude! We Yo. go RV, you know it. Our, oh, you guys have an RV, the Boonies. We go, we go. That's RV. a reality yeah. show. It's awesome, dude. Oh, it's God. so fun. Put I love go, RV. Put some GoPros up in that thing and sell it. <laughs> amazing <laughs> so fun I, i'm in my own world so. in that cockpit dude i don't even listen i don't hear anything you can't talk to me it's amazing so we're, we're happy to have jay back in the mix here on uh, the online committee by the way before we get to i've got some mics for you guys i'll throw some I mics have one out too. if you guys if you guys have oh, mics you can throw them at me Easy. we'll get to some dumb football questions we're gonna settle in for a long episode here but uh appreciate you guys we're almost to nineteen thousand youtube subscribers so click that like button, that subscribe button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. The three best things you can do to help us out are grow the YouTube channel, tell a friend or five friends who love football that, hey, there's this new podcast that's called the O-Line Committee, and then Apple and Spotify give us a five-star rating and a positive review. And uh, let us know, too, on the Apple comments. Some people are doing this, and it's hilarious. Who is your favorite all-time obscure offensive lineman? Yes. Yeah. We will read and reminisce. There's a couple we'll get to today when we get Ooh. to dumb football questions. But keep those coming on the uh, the Apple and YouTube comment section. So, all right. We're going to go here first. My first mic for you guys is J.J. McCarthy. And here's the latest report. Actually, it might be the commander. <laughs> the commanders are the mic. <laughs> Jay just dropped his microphone. Jay's out. I, mean, I knew it was going to be like You're starting early, sensitive. huh? Dude, listen. No, Before let Mackie finish. Okay, go ahead. Let, let Mackie finish. So I, don't, I don't have to listen to this multiple But here's times. why. Here's why. I already it's know actually, what he's going to say. The, the commanders are actually the mic. Tom Pelissero is reporting from NFL Network. 
longtime friend of, of uh, old Macadac here. He's reporting that the majority of the league sources he's talking with at the league meetings right now are saying the commanders are likely to draft J.J. McCarthy with the number two overall pick. The, he's, he's talking to GMs and scouting directors and football ops people saying the chatter, people talking about the commanders, is that J.J. McCarthy is their guy with the number two overall pick. Listen, everything that's happening right now is nothing more than posturing and positioning and smoke and mirrors to think I can make everyone else think what I want them to think. Every owner, every GM is trying. And it, you know who probably started those rumors? The commanders. Yeah. Right? Because if they don't want McCarthy, they want Drake May, or they want someone else, they don't want to just come out right out and say it. Because then everyone knows, right? You want some mysteria there because you want some other teams to possibly come in and trade or see what else is out there. I want to know what other teams are thinking, right? Like, I I love Pelissero. I think Ian Rappaport and all those dudes do a great job. But at this time of year, they are nothing more than pawns in a much larger game <laughs> that is the NFL draft. Everyone's using them to put what they want out and what information they want to be told, not what they don't want to be told, right? Nothing that gets nothing that's truly kept close to the vest is gonna find its way to Pelissaro or Rap Reports or those guys' desks, right? Those things stay right here. But there's these little pieces of information you leak to create a narrative in which you want it to be understood. I think that's what's happening right now. So I would the logic there be that out. the commanders want teams like the Giants or the Vikings or if, if there's teams further down Trade that really up. like McCarthy, that, hey, if you want him, You're you better come get him. get him at number two and give us a godfather package. Correct. And then the commanders can maybe f figure out a way Correct. to still be third or fourth or fifth and right. get a Drake May or something. Right. If, that's, I mean, what what's all everyone's read? The Vikings whole private workout with J.J. McCarthy, right? Like, they're the guy. Everyone knows it. Like, if I'm the commanders, I'm like, well, let's see how much they actually really like him. Right. right? If we start to steal their golden goose and they have their minds made up that he's the guy, let's put their money where their mouth is and see if they're ready to come up and get him or not. Well, they may not even like him. They may think he's a total piece of trash and be like, no, he's not our guy. We hate him. Right? We, we're all in on Drake May. Right? But if you tell the world what the world thinks they want to hear... Now you're starting to make people nervous. But right. the, the, other, the other possibility here, though, is because our guy Jim Harbaugh did his, for a quick aside, the annual coach's breakfast and the annual coach's photo is the greatest thing in the oh, NFL. The best. They all just, see, and they're, they're all in their little button-up shirts in the photo. Dude, the, Barstool does some crazy things, but Big Cat and PMT, when they break down the coach's photo... <laughs> Is one, favorite, is one of my favorite is one of my favorite segments every single. The Harbaugh year. Is, sitting front and center in the front row, of course, together. They are. right next to yeah. Andy Reid, right? Yep. Like Andy Reid's got the power shorts move. Like, oh, I love it! I love <laughs> the it. The Hawaiian shirt, shirt. holding two cheeseburgers. You know? Oh, so great! But Jim but yeah. Harbaugh, th then he sits down for his breakfast because what happens is every year, like two weeks after free agency, all the coaches, oh, it's the owners, they t the league meetings, they talk about. And we'll get to the rule changes on this podcast. But they all they have thirty two different tables, and all of the head coaches are just having breakfast with media. Yep. So you can just go and like it's buffet style. You get your little scrambled eggs, your little waffle maker, and your side of fruit. You can just go sit down next to Sean Payton and ask him questions about Russell Wilson. And Jim Harbaugh once again, he was asked, "Hey, that JJ McCarthy pro day," and he goes, "Best I've ever seen. Best best pro day, best throwing, best." He's on the he's been on the propaganda train for like a month and a half, but he said prophetically. Like two months ago, by the time the offseason process is over, J.J. McCarthy is going to be a lot closer to the first quarterback off the board than where he's being mocked in the second round. Oh, he was and right now, right. like, I mean, he's right now he's a top five pick. And as of this report, there's some steam for number two. I know it makes Jeremiah's head pop off. No, but, but it's Jay's fascinating got a great point. what's happening right now. The minute the commander said J.J. McCarthy, you have to wonder how many teams piqued their interest. Like, uh oh, wait, what? Wait a minute, wait a minute. What do they mean that they but the truth is those guys also know that they just throw shit out there just to see each other squirm. And they just do that to see each other. They mess with each other. They're like best friends, right? It'd be like yeah. messing with your best friend. Like you know somebody likes some girl and you're like, Hey, I really like her. I'm gonna make a move. <laughs> your friends quickly like, Whoa. Thought we were boys. All right, hold up. 
hold up, how much of the snack packs are going to take to get her back, right? Like all of a sudden guys are starting to <laughs> divvy up what's going on at lunch. That's how this goes. People laugh. Jay, you're laughing, but you're thinking because no, that's exactly so, what this is. Yeah, it's, it's so, so true. true. You know how many lies are put out there? So many people ask me this, and I, I'm going to stand firm on this. Who's drafting who? Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. The only thing we know is the first pick will be Caleb Williams. That is all we know. After that, nobody knows what's going to happen. And we've seen it every year. Teams come out and say ridiculous things just to see what everybody else does. Hey, let's drop this. Tell me who calls by tomorrow at lunch. All of a sudden, tomorrow at lunch, four teams have called. Okay, these four are really interested in them. What did they offer us? They offer us anything good? Anything crazy? Nah, all right, never mind. No, no, no. We're going to keep the two pick. And then all of a sudden, it's Drake May. And they're oh, you know, we were just going back and forth. We could have finally figured it out. It's the same story every year. Do I think he's going to be a top five pick? Yeah, probably. Do I think he goes two? I don't know. His name yeah, isn't maybe. Caleb Williams. No. I mean, who, dude, you don't know if the Broncos are going to trade up to two. So many people are looking for quarterbacks right now. So many people are quick to be like, dude, we'll do whatever we got to do to get one right now. It's just chaos and it's chaos for the next month and it's crazy and everyone keeps asking me what's going to happen what what's this team going to do what's that dude i don't even know because at first my opinion would be go to three right new england is probably going to be the only team that would slide off a qb just because ownership you knew new coach he'd be like listen i don't like anybody in this year's draft let's wait till next year that'd be the only or we need we need players we need need, yeah i I don't see the first round pick right i don't see washington being that team that's like we're going to mess around with this quarterback pick. I think that they know who they want. I don't think it's J.J. Right. McCarthy, but I think they know who they want. And I think they're just yeah. saying that to see, let's see what we can get. Let's see I mean, if they, essentially, they essentially yeah. have the number one overall pick after Caleb Williams. Right. right. Like, like they, they have, again, full pick of the litter. So they can just take Caleb off the board, and they can pinpoint <laughs> best available in the entire class. If they think that's J.J. McCarthy, good on them. But I just don't think that at this point in the process they would come out and say that. No, that'd be unless, too telling. Unless, unless they're just trying to posture and position in order to gain some ground and gain some leverage and see what the other – like Boone said, who squirms, right? Who who all of a sudden read the tweet and was like – at the, le- at the owner guy? meeting, right? Like, that our guy? Who, 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 wait, wait I, I thought he wasn't going to fall. Like, oh. No. dabble over there. So it, how fe- much it feels like it, it feels like a, <laughs> like a Vikings trap, right? Where there's like the Vikings, all oh, the Vikings love. And I don't know if you guys saw yesterday, Dan Graziano from ESPN, another one of these NFL insiders, and he understands. So he's an insider and a reporter, but he also understands the art of speculation season and entertainment. And so he put out, and it's no coincidence the timing here. So he puts out on ESPN.com. If you're the Vikings. Here are different trades that you could make with every team from three down to 10 if you're looking to move up. And the commanders might have read that and said, wait a second. If the Patriots are going to get a godfather hall at number three, why can't we, why can't we float? Well, why isn't Kwesi Adolfo Mensa called us? Let's float a little something out here. We're still a month away, so there's all these little test balloons being floated yep, out. Exact, I think, that's exactly, that's what, exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. But, but my biggest issue with, and this is where, all right, this is where I'm going to, I'm going to identify Jay as my next mic here. Jeremiah, oh. you are my next mic. Oh. The certainty with which, and I'm like, I'm kind of neutral on JJ McCarthy because I don't know. I don't work in an NFL front office. I watch games on TV. I watch YouTube videos and film breakdowns and stuff, but like, I don't get to spend nine hours putting him through a workout, seeing if he's a weirdo. You know, I can tell you, like, we might have talked about this before. Like, Christian Ponder was a bust 10 years ago. And if you would have spent more than like 15 or 20 minutes around Christian Ponder, a lot of his teammates at the time, after like a year or two, would have said, oh, yeah, he's major beta, not to like trash the guy, major beta personality, just kind of a kind of a follower, not like a lead the room type of personality. But if you're just watching him on TV and looking at his stats and look at his combine scores, right? So I preface this by saying, I'm not in the room. I, I if I need to sit down with someone for eight hours to know, like, okay, are you what? Are you smart? Can you can you hang in a room? So the certainty with which people speak positively and negatively about some of these quarterback prospects, dude, like the 49ers whiffed on Trey Lance, one of the yeah. smartest front offices in the league. So it's it's mm. it's such an inexact science. And so you have been so staunch saying J.J. McCarthy is not the guy. He's more of a Blake Bortles than a Tom Brady. People need to calm down. And I'm saying, like, I get I get a little wary when people, whether it's you or whoever, are 100% confident 
in a quarterback draft opinion because it's so yeah. wide open and volatile. It is. Yeah. I mean, I just you look at the other guys in the class, and that's for me is when you're looking and you're saying I'm elevating him above a Jaden Daniels or I'm elevating him above a Drake May. I just don't see it. Right. And I mean, I listen, I'll be the first one to sit here and eat my hat if I'm wrong. Like, I have no problem doing that. I will. I just I I just haven't seen it. And people are sending me YouTube videos of his highlights. And I'm like, dude, they're play action, seven step drops, throw it as far as you can. Right. Or there's some of these like I and I, I think a lot of it, too. And this may not be a fair assessment to him and is. When I watch a quarterback, I watched him do it one time this year against Alabama, having to like come back and lead this big comeback at the end, the end at the end of the games. And I think when you like, think about some of the quarterbacks that have been like, "Hey, these are the dudes," and they come from great programs and they've played and in, in, won every game in the, during the year. The NFL is decided by one score, like ninety percent of the time. And so when these guys come, like a Justin Fields comes from Ohio State where you just beat the brakes off of everyone all year long. It's hard for me to sit there and be like, yeah, but when the pressure's on in a two-minute situation at the end of the half, or you got to have it, or there's different situations throughout the game, I just haven't got a chance to watch him perform at a super high level in critical situations throughout the game. Mm -hmm. right? And same can be said, the vice versa is we got to see Caleb Williams do that in not great fashion. Right, not great fashion was Caleb Williams. Like there was a lot of times that the critical situation in the game, he folded like a, a, a house of cards. Dude, he makes right? me nervous. He I makes think me the very bear, nervous. The Bears have to take him, but like right. But then, but dude. the thing with him is the the physical talent that he yeah. brings is another level of eliteness. Right, like watching his pro day, he can throw the ball so far. Right, and I was at a bar here last night watching the game. We had dinner with a client, and the the old 2015 divisional round between the uh, Cardinals and the Packers was on, wow. and like you're watching Aaron Rodgers just flick of the wrist and psh, there the Gone. thing goes, and you see some of that in Caleb Williams' game, right? That type of like generational physical talent, right? And so that's where like okay, so that's why you look at Caleb Williams, but then. You look at McCarthy, and yes, he's got some very good arm talent. He's got some good physical tools to him. But I just, I think the hard part for me is I don't have a good evaluator of the critical situations, put the team on my back type moments that I can just point to and say that's the guy. But you know what's that's funny about dude. that? Like on the flip side, Michael Penix, everything you just laid out, you're looking for close games, high leverage, right? Like he played exclusively close games, and they won all of them his last year at Washington. Another thing, and I'm just, I'm just throwing it out. I like Michael Penix. I don't think he's going to be a top five pick, but like, if I'm drafting later in the first round or early in the second round, I'm taking my, 100%. I'm probably taking Michael Penix. One hundred percent. You guys tell me as offensive linemen. I feel like this is this is my favorite statistic of all oh of the college. Oh God. Okay. What happens when quarterbacks take sacks or avoid sacks? We always credit or blame the offensive line beyond anything else. Like Peyton Manning in his prime with the with the the Colts back in the day, he had like the least mobile quarterback in the history of the oh, NFL. Yeah. Peyton Manning, right? Just a statue, and he had seasons where he was taking like eleven sacks in sixteen games. And of course, you know Jeff Saturday. It's not they, he had some offensive linemen, but it's, oh, yeah. it's because he knows how to get rid of the ball, right? So Michael Penix, in six years as a starting quarterback, and he's made probably like four full years worth of starts. He's had some injuries. He's taken sacks in 2% of his dropbacks. 30 sacks taken only in six years. And just for reference, a good NFL sack rate is like three times that. Like the, like the best quarterbacks at avoiding sacks. And the two best sack avoiding quarterbacks in the NFL are Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Makes sense. And the, and the rest of the list is like Jordan Love, uh, Kirk Cousins actually great at avoiding sacks late in his career here. So, I mean, there's guys like Penix that people are just writing off completely. Oh, he had a couple knee injuries, and so he's worthless in this discussion. But well, my point old. is there's a lot of drafts where Lamar Jackson goes 32nd, and there's two busts in front of him. Right. The order in which these guys are taken is not going to be the order in which they are achieving in the NFL. No, it's what do they do with them when they get to the NFL. And the, you know, a good point of that is Trevor Lawrence. He was in Clemson, lost like, what, one game? 
gets to the NFL, it's a whole new world. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, man, even if you are the best in college, you can't do shit up here. I, you're not going to do anything. Those windows close faster than you think. These defenses are smarter than you think. Defensive coordinators are meant to put pressure on single you. That is it. Put pressure on one guy. That's why this is such a serious decision. But I'll tell you what, watching film last night of LSU, I had to watch their left tackle. Kid's a stud. Stud. That quarterback is a stud. Wow. I mean, I'm watching. Yeah, it's I just, ridiculous. it took me back to kind of like Kaepernick. I was like, dude, running around, getting out. I was like, what? what? And if there's anyone that's getting written off in this, it's a little bit of him. I kind of, that's why I'm saying for JJ McCarthy to jump up over a guy like that, that's why I'm, I think this is all bullshit. Because <laughs> I watched that film last night of that quarterback, and there was times people had him dead to rights, and he was gone. And I was like, huh? And then he's fitting it through windows. He, I was like, he will, dude. He will need to learn how to not take big hits, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, he, there, there was, was one against Alabama, he, and the defensive end caught him running down the middle of the field. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. And I was like, oh, God, don't do that, kid. Don't do that. But, hey, I love it. You got to see a kid go out there and compete. That's one of the things that Jay and I are talking about. We see the transformation of where the quarterback room is going, and we see kids like this coming out, and we're like, wow. That is scary dangerous to think about, right? I can throw the ball as far as I want. I can fit it in a great window. But at the same time, if I don't like any of those options, I'm just going to take off running. And then everybody that's just dropped in this Tampa 2, cover 3, whatever it is, you, you have no idea what's going on. You're down the field with your receivers, and I'm just breaking around linebackers. Like, this is – it's fun. And at the same time, no team in the NFL would ever tell you what they're going to do before they do it. Technically, but, Chicago's not even came out and said they're going to take. To Caleb your Blake. point about Jaden Daniels, like you just, you guys both just, we, we just, we talked about JJ McCarthy for 10, 15 minutes here, and it feels like disproportionately, the conversation around the league and media is about Caleb Williams, obviously, but JJ McCarthy is getting the most headlines. Take Caleb Williams out of any of these quarterbacks. Oh yeah, for why sure. is that? Why? Like, it's, I think you guys are probably right. It's because a lot of these teams at the top are just they, in, internally they're saying, well, if Jaden Daniels is there, we're taking him. So let's not let oh. that. Let, let's yeah. let's throw other names out. It's like you're in a fantasy yeah. auction. You play For fantasy this whole thing you're, is. you're throwing names out that yeah. you don't want. So other teams, right? By yeah, the way, should another. Should have told him we wanted a receiver. <laughs> That's, should have told him we wanted Marvin Harris. God damn it. <laughs> another thing to look at, too, is if you, to me, and tell me if I'm wrong on this. If you struggle against pressure in college, what's it going to be like? I, not like uh, hypothetical pressure, which is a big thing, too. I mean, literally, like if college defenses fluster you and you can't operate, that's a red flag to me because how, how are you going to operate in the NFL? The, the best quarterbacks in college football last year when pressured, according to PFF, in order. Number one was Bo Nix. Shorter passes, shorter uh, yeah. depth of target. Number two was Jaden Daniels. Quick pass game. Yeah, and number three was J.J. McCarthy, and when blitzed, the number one quarterback in college football when blitzed was Jaden Daniels. Twenty oh, yeah. touchdowns, no yeah. picks, eleven yards per attempt. That's just as a thrower when blitzed. I know. By the way. Forget it's, about when he yeah. ran for a thousand yards. Likely I mean, he being won the Heisman. In the pocket, right? Yeah, he, I mean, did he won the, the freaking Heisman. Let's I mean, not the forget. Dude's an yeah. animal. Like I love Jaden Daniels. Like, but and here's the thing: none of those quarterbacks we just mentioned are from a program where I think is going to assimilate quickly in the NFL and have no problem. None of them, right? The, the college game is nowhere near the complexity at the NFL game. It has fallen so far in the simplicity category that none of the guys we're talking about right now do I think are ready to come in and read defenses and set protections and be ready to go, right? Like, And that was even the issue with last year. I mean, C.J. Stroud was a bit of an anomaly, to be able to come in and do what he did, yeah. right? I mean, you don't see that as often. And last year you had similar discussions, right? It was Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson. Like, in everyone thought Bryce was going to be the guy, and then Richardson got hurt. Like, it always happens like this. But it, it's because of the premier position that it is of being a quarterback, and everyone is now trying to get the, the formulation of get a quarterback on a rookie deal, go win a Super Bowl. Right. right? That's what everyone's doing, which is why you're going to probably see a quarterback go one, two, three. Like, and that maybe is four. the reason. If and someone maybe four, four if someone now is trying to five. see up there. Dude, it could right? be the first five. It could be people trading in and people trading out to get out. I mean, think about it. If, 
if somebody There's would a lot call of teams the Cardinals, quarterbacks, yeah, man. If somebody called the Cardinals, like say the Vikings call them, Cardinals would be like, all right, cool. You want to switch over there? We'll find a receiver back in the back end. At the same time, the Broncos are going to be calling up to be like, hey, we need to jump in here at some point. Like, it's going to be really. This is probably one of the most exciting drafts that there's been in a while, just Dude. because of everything that's been leaked. But then, but then it also could be just straight up, straight up, boom, boom, right. boom, boom, boom. It's, it's right, like it's anticlimactic. It, like it just happens the, first, the way it happens. Where will the first defensive player go? That's uh, another eight, fun question. To Atlanta. To Atlanta. Eight or nine. Take eight an edge rusher. Atlanta. Yeah, I think edge rusher. To eight, they might. They could trade back though too if there's if there's if there's still teams piling on top of each other to get quarterbacks and receivers. If Dallas Turner's see. if Dallas Turner's still there at at eight, he's getting taken. He's gone. Yeah, uh, I think he's a good fit for Atlanta, um, because they're at eight, right? Yeah. Yes. The first yeah. the yeah. first five could be quarterbacks easily, but after that, it'll mm. all it'll it could just for trade ups. Like you could it see could, two teams trying to jump trade up. Yeah. yeah. If if two teams if trade not, up in five, if not, it's, it's going to be first quarterback, three. top three, receiver, 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 and then tackles. I think tackles may break in there, and then it'll be it'll be so the first. The first dude, it could be three quarterbacks and three receivers, and then it could go three O linemen. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. That by could the be way, if you're it's if a very you're a mock, mock, offensive heavy draft in the front. Oh end. yeah. If sure. you're a mock drafter out there, okay. If you're a Mel Kiper Jr., you're a Daniel Jeremiah, any of these mockers out there, okay? If you're not doing trades in your mock, your mock is worthless to me right Thank now. you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love when you just go through a mock and you see a random trade, and you're like, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Somebody did their due diligence enough to go, in my mock, this team trades up. They sell the farm for this guy. Yeah. I love when people do that. When they don't, there, you, it's you so coward boring. mockers. I know. Dude, for sure. It's going to be exciting. That's for sure. Dude, Mel Kuyper after that. I'm going to call Mel Kuyper to the carpet right now. A couple do weeks it, ago. Do it. Do so it. free. So first Kangaroo week of free court agency. is in session. Mel Kuyper, no trades Here in your go. mock. That's a ding for you right there. Woo! That's fine. Yeah. So for the That's first fine. week of free agency gets done, right? Just a wild week of player movement. But now we know exactly what holes teams need to fill in the draft and wh who might be moving up. There's rumors about this team, that team. And he comes out and he does a 2.0, 3.0, and there's no trades. You got J.J. McCarthy falling to like 11 or 12 in your mock? Come on, guy. You're plugged in enough. You're Mel Kuyper, man. You invented the NFL draft. Seriously. He's a weather, kind of like, dude. He gets dude, paid he's starting to act wrong. like Daniel Jeremiah. Knock it off. It's nonsense. Is it my turn? Yes, fire away. Yeah. Okay, listen. I have the most obscure mic ever oh, because I read this the other day. You read? I read. What? Yeah, I know. It's hard. <laughs> Is it, you can read? Who read it to you? My yeah, it was a, was, was, it a was there pictures? Tape? There was. <laughs> the the Cram. Niners lost a draft pick due to an accounting glitch. Oh, I know. Did you see that? And I never felt so bad for someone's job because you know the minute they found out who that was, they were like, "You're gone." Like, well, it's it's one guy. It's the cap guy. It's I know Jeff but, diamonds, dude. How do you screw that up? I mean, I've never really heard of a team messing up something like this, and this just totally got brushed under like, yeah, but they lost a draft pick. And I was like, guaranteed someone's super pissed right now, and this is not going to go over well. I, it's been and, – And it was for a $75,000 amount. So some player received like $75,000 more than he should have made. But we're talking no, my $200 guess is, million dollar caps here. Right? My guess yeah. is that it was a bonus – either a likely to be earned or a not likely probably a not likely to be earned bonus so there's two ways bonuses get put into contracts so sorry sidebar so sidebar. there's the way that bonuses right you see people all the time talk about like playing incentive bonuses or pro bowl bonuses or whatever like so as an agent you work in bonuses into player contracts and those fall under two categories likely to be earned not likely to be earned if it's a likely to be earned bonus it immediately counts towards the salary cap for that year, right? So if it's like a starter that needs to play 50% of the snaps, right? That gets – he thought, okay, he's going to earn that, so let's just count that towards the cap Who already. determines whether it's likely? The league? You, uh, no, you, 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 you put that in the contract of like this is a likely to be earned or not likely to be earned. Okay. And so, But then there's like not likely to be earned, right, which would be a guy that signs – a one-year, $2 million deal, and if he plays, he's a rotational special teams linebacker, and you throw a, if he plays 80% of the snaps, then he makes an extra $75,000, 
right? Something like that. That's he not plays likely. For, he plays for the Jets, and the and the bonus is that if the Jets make the playoffs, that would be unlikely to be earned. <laughs> bonus, right? right. And what happens is if that then happens, then that counts towards next year's cap. Right. Like that's how that works. And so, I mean, it was, it could easily be an accounting year like that where it was something from the year before that didn't get like counted into that. It's just a little bonus that got like, that's probably in my mind what happened. It's like, like I don't over, think someone overpaid, got overpaid a player by 75,000 is how right. they framed it. And they lost a 75K pick. cost you a draft pick. Dude, that's insane. That in the is, NFL, that's I mean, a they're, wild small they're, amount. They're lucky, it, they're lucky it didn't push them over the cap. That's what I'm wondering. That. Like, cause that it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't a big enough number that like pushed them completely over the cap. Cause if you would have got pushed over the cap, we're talking big, big problems. Big, uh, dude, big, that's never been happened. Problems. That's never yeah. happened. A team been over the cap. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Did somebody just go over the cap and they totally brushed this under the rug and then they're just going to take one draft pick away from them? I was like, that's kind of a well, big Well, they self reported, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, right. Like, I, I think, I mean, it's probably like going to court. To. You told on yourself, we're going to take away a dude, draft imagine, pick. Imagine, imagine being the cap guy. And you're like doing the numbers and you're sitting there. You've like, I've ran this a hundred times. You're like, I can't. You just go knock on, you knock on John Mr. Lynch. Lynch. Hey. Mr. Lynch, do you have hey, a buddy. second? Are you busy? <laughs> I'm, the I'm yeah. the intern. Yeah, you send the intern. Hey, here, go go give this PowerPoint to John Lynch. And it just says, <laughs> I effed up. I'm sorry. Minus 75 in red. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, dude, John Lynch at whatever it was, press conference or whatever, he goes, he goes, we'll be good, but you hate to see a fifth round pick next year be forfeited. The fifth round's been good to us. And then the article I'm reading lists off like they landed George Kittle in the fifth round, Dre Greenlaw. Uh, Colton McKivitz, a couple other players. Like they, they got literally some ballers, dude. Really good players in the fifth round. <laughs> I mean, dude, to get a draft Man. pick taken away is a huge deal. That's like your dad taking yeah. your toy away and being like, "You can never have it back." You're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I, I must have messed up really bad. And I'm giving, yeah. it, and I'm giving it to your. I'm giving it to your arch rival. Yeah, I'm gonna give right? it to the Rams. Like, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? You like this Wait. Tonka truck? Goes to L.A. now. <laughs> I feel like being an NFL cap guy would be. It sounds like wow, amazing, what a fun job, man. You get to like work on it. It sounds like the most stressful. No one, any move that the franchise makes gets attributed to the GM and the coach. Even if you were in the room playing a big role, right? It's the it's the most like it's like being a long snapper. Like right? you're in the NFL and it's great, but the only time people talk about you is if you have like a screwed up cap situation, dude. There. Or, or you overpay a player by seventy five thousand. They they are the grease in the in the machine. They are the cap guys. They're like very those important. dudes are they are the smartest people in the organization. Easily. Hands down, full stop. Like those dudes, when you talk to them and the way their brain works and the way they forecast, that's the thing that mind blowing. Like they forecast four years out. Right. They're they're constantly living in like the cap guys right now are thinking about twenty twenty eight, twenty twenty seven. Like, what's our window? How do we build this team for a Super Bowl run in two years or three years? Or are we in our window now so we have to load it and then we know that in two years we're blowing this whole thing up, yeah. right? All out the bills, right? Like, th these dudes are so smart and the way they move pieces around to fit under right at that budget window is incredible. So smart. I have when so you, much respect for the cap guys in the NFL. When I used to go into Prague Marate's office, dude, it would have, like, the year next year, the following year, the year after that, and then everybody that was on the team, like it was, you well, would walk it in. Include me. It was like Where a beautiful yeah. mind. Where's I'm not Alex even kidding Boone? you, dude. It was like numbers everywhere. You were like, there was a pictograph. You were like, dude, what is going? He's like, I'm just <laughs> getting ready. You're like, dude, I can't imagine how much fun you have in here, just messing with numbers and like what ifs and if this and it's a lot though because if you don't get it right, as you see, they punish you quickly. Like they're like, all right, you screwed up. Now we're gonna do, take. Do you guys away. like the way? So the NFL has a hard cap where you 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 can't go over it, and and there's a floor too. So there's a range. But, but you have yes, to spend over. It's a different thing over the four NBA, years. It's a lot. Yeah, right. But the NBA lets teams you can. So the cap is a, it's called a soft cap where you can yeah. re-sign your own players to go over. But then there's like different levels of luxury tax and roster building penalties. So you can like there's a a first apron, a second apron where if you're the Warriors and you have a dynasty going. You can spend $100 million over the cap. You're going to get taxed X amount on every dollar, and you're unable to do this, that, and the other when it comes to roster building. Do you like this, the hard cap the NFL has? Yes. yes. Has, has, to sure. it. has to have it. It's easy and simple. We all know it, too. Like We can all look at it and be like, yeah, you're good. Or It makes but it that's more why, competitive like, for the rules. league, too. 
There yes. are rules. You can spend over the cap, but over a four-year span, you have to spend like, I think it's 95% of the cap. So you have to spend 95 because at times when I was in the NFL early, teams were only spending tiny amounts of the cap. Like there was, there were teams that wouldn't save like 30% of the cap and continue rolling it over. And it was like, what the hell's going on? These guys aren't spending yeah. any money. And then all of a sudden the rules were like, all right, now you got to spend more of your money. You can go over if you go under, but over a four-year span, it has to equal 95% of them. And so then it was like, oh, that makes total sense now. Like, yeah, you have to the spend owners, money. The owners were having players for cheap and then shoving yeah. money in their pockets. Which was kind of messed up. Think about Capital like the, billions. the way the yeah. NFL is structured. Owners can't lose money. If you look at like the Forbes reports, the oh, yeah, no. the <laughs> least profitable teams, quote unquote, are still bringing in like $100 million in net operating expenses. But it allows teams from Green Bay, Wisconsin and Buffalo, New York to compete financially and roster building with teams from New York and L.A. and Chicago and Dallas and these big markets. So, yeah, it's fair. No, you, yeah, the hard cap will never change. No. Uh, okay, Jay, throw a mic out. I've got another thing for you guys too before we get to dumb football questions. So we let's settle in here. This will be a long podcast. Ooh, I like the way this goes. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. You guys took both my mics actually. So well, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let I, you guys. You guys go ahead. I, I, dude, those okay. were my go mic ahead, was ahead, honestly Phil. gonna be the, my was gonna be the Niners because I was gonna talk about it because that's kind of my world and that's your, your world. So, <laughs> so I okay. saw it. and I was like, this is unprecedented. Yeah, go for it. So uh, my mic is. It's the first batch of NFL over under win totals. We now have different websites and publications. Oh yeah, you sent that to me. Coming out with, you know, the the uh, the Chiefs and the Niners and the Ravens, the site that I'm say. looking at right now, are all the the highest win total projected teams at eleven and a half each. I'm gonna go through this entire list. I'm just gonna read off teams and their projected win total. When I get to a team that you feel like you have a really strong opinion that, nope, that number's too high or that number's too low, you stop me, okay? Okay. So okay. Chiefs, 11 and a half. 49ers, 11 and a half. Ravens, 11 and a half. Lions, 10 and a half. Bengals, 10 and a half. Bills, 10 and a half. I'm going to stop you at the Bengals. I think the Bengals are over. Hard over. You think that's too low? Too, 10 and a half too low? <laughs> yeah. I'm putting them. I'm putting them more closer to eleven and a half. I am. I, I think. I think. You know, they signed Trent Brown to be their right tackle for a year. I think they draft a young tackle, Joe Burrow, if he can stay healthy. You have Jamar Chase and T. Higgins for one more year, right? Joe Mixon moved on, so they're going to be another kind of back by committee. I think that numbers. I think that numbers too low. I think the Bengals. I think people saw. I mean, still ten's a, a high number for them. But I, I still think the Bengals are not to be trifled with. Trifled with? That's a great... Not to be under, trifled an, with. Like that's an underutilized Ooh. phrase right there. Mm -hmm. Not to trifle them. Not to trifled be trifled with. with. So, yeah, I'm yes. going to stop you. That's that's my first one I was reading through that where I was like, nah, I, that's okay. that's not how that works. Eagles, 10 and a half. Honestly, that feels a little high. A little high. Little feels high. a little but high. But still, it's still an uber-talented... They have a roster. great. They have a good touch. Like it's offense, still an dude. uber talented yeah. roster. It's I see weird that. vibes. I, my, Fal my, 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 Falcons ten and a half. That's a. I'm going to say yes because we've talked about this. That division's crap. Yeah, I'm cool with that. It's them and okay. Tampa. You get to play Carolina twice a year. It's two wins. Yes. And the Saints. <laughs> the Saints are always feisty. Mm, they used to be. They're not feisty anymore. I, I think there's a lot. There was of times where they would jump you at the bottom of the pile. I know. Okay, like they would kick the shit out of you. I don't see that anymore from them. I'm very disappointed. I will say this. I had a chance a couple weeks ago. I was at the, the Barrett Sports Media Summit in New York, and there was a couple guys from Atlanta Media there. And uh, and one of them, uh, Reno, Mark Reno, he came up and he was like, dude, Kirk Cousins, man. Like he was all he's like excited for the Falcons. And I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, it's it's fine. It's great. He goes, what do you mean? Like, you, you don't love it for the Falcons? I said, well, you're a franchise looking to go from seven wins to like nine or ten wins, so this is great for you. He's like, so, but, but, like, he's, you know, but, 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 but this, I'm like, that's, but that's what he is. He, he's what you... Kirk. Kirk is 36, and he is a good, solid, floor raising quarterback. But there's a lot of like Falcons are Super Bowl contenders discussion out there that I feel in the, the ten and a half number too. So they're sitting on the. You're telling me the Falcons are on the same level as the Bills, Bengals, Lions, a notch below the Niners? I, I, I just, 
let's calm down a little bit on the Kirk Savior syndrome here in Atlanta, okay? He's going to help operate your offense. I don't know that he's winning you a Super Bowl here in 2024. It's a lot of pressure. breath. It is fun to watch the conversations that have been happening in Minneapolis for two years about overpaying quarterbacks just pick up and migrate down south and start all over again. Here we go. Here we (laughs) go, Atlanta. If you you, you look at some Atlanta, like like, uh, like, what you do, Mac, for for score and all the stuff down in Atlanta, it's the same conversations. It's Did we do the right thing? What are we doing? Like, the Kirk Crusaders have showed up down south, like, hello, everybody, welcome, I will defend this man until I die. Right? Like, they're all, they all followed him. All the Kirk Crusaders followed him. It's funny, though, to see Atlanta in that position. Like, did we make the right decision? Like at first they were like, let's do it. And the minute you sign that two hundred million dollar contract, they're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what did we do? I, I dude, I've been seeing it too. It's the same thing. It's like you said, it migrated south. And the Kirk Crusaders have got like their their shorts on now and they're like, Yeah, it's warmer down here. It's better <laughs> down here anyway. Ka- right? Khaki shorts, beige khaki dude, shorts. Yeah. But this is what I love about the NFL because with a ton of money comes a ton of responsibility. Like before when he was here. People were kind of looking at him always like, ah, he's the guy, he's the guy. But now it's like, okay, you have almost reset the cap. You are getting paid top dollar. Now let's see what you do. It's going to be interesting. But but keep going with the teams because there was a team on there. So to my guy, Mark Zeno, hey, seven wins to ten wins, you guys are golden. Anything beyond that, calm down a little bit. Win the wild card and we'll talk, okay? Here we go. Packers, ten. I'm cool with that. Dolphins, ten. Cowboys, ten. Yeah. Okay. That's Texans is Texans nine and a half. Uh, Jets Jets low. nine and that's a half low. feels a little there. It is low. That's Texans low. nine no. and a half low. Yeah, that's yeah. low, dude. I I think that what Houston's doing, and then they brought down Daniel, right? And I know that some people don't like this signing, but the Joe Mixon signing, I like that. I like that a lot. I think he's a tough running back, and I think that when the situation calls for it, you're like, hey, go break someone's face open. Like this is to me, them kind of like, hey, here's another guy in but, the backfield that we can lean on. I agree. I know what you're going to say. That being but. said, they're going to play a much harder schedule next year. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you win the division. You host a playoff game. Guess what? Guess who's coming? you got Mahomes coming down the mm-hmm. pipe now. You've got Josh Allen coming down the pipe now. Like, you've got the top dogs that you will play week in and week out now from the AFC. Like, that's when you really test your mettle as a quarterback in this league of when you start going toe-to-toe with the best of the best. We're going to get to see that from C.J. Stroud this year, and I think that's probably why that number – is down a little bit compared to maybe what people may think it is, is because they, we haven't got to see him week in and week out go against those top level dudes. And there's yeah. a year of film out there now. Right. Like that's a piece that people don't really think about is when you're a young quarterback and you come take the league by storm, like CJ Stroud did, everyone's trying to catch up to CJ Stroud. What's he doing? How's he doing this? Like week in and week out, like we're just watching the film from the week before. You give these defensive coordinators a year to study what did they do, how did they do it, and have a plan to stop him, that's when you get to see, did C.J. Stroud take the next jump in his game personally of elevating himself, that he can elevate the team, or did we figure him out and now he's going to have to go back to the drawing board a little bit? I'm curious to see what defenses do against the Texans next year to limit some of that big explosive playness that they had all year. Very similar to like what they did to Mahomes, where they're like, you're not throwing it behind us anymore. Right? Like, (laughs) Shell coverage, let's see if we can make you operate inside the pocket. And he was like, okay, watch me, right? And now they're going to try and do the same thing to to Stroud as they did to Mahomes a few years back. Yeah, it's it's, sometimes there's like a second-year dip with quarterbacks that that have a great rookie season for that reason, and that might – it could be schedule, it could be scouting. Uh, The Jets, nine and a half – is to me, it's that might so be high, buddy. On that might be high, guys buddy. Staying healthy, yeah, Tyron are, Smith, Aaron Rodgers. Tra- <sighs> I mean, dude, the last the last like four years, their left tackle has been like average age of thirty five. Mm-hmm. Right, you had Dwayne Brown in there for a while, couldn't stay healthy. Now you bring in Tyron Smith, who's arguably one of the greatest to do it. But it's, I don't think he's finished a season in the last four years. So there's like so at least to- like played a full year. Right, like, yeah, you've got that's such a predicated number. That number is very volatile based off injuries for Mm -hmm. sure. And how well does I mean, Aaron Rodgers? Right, Right. we saw what happens when he doesn't work. I'm going to throw out a huge group of seven different teams at eight and a half. Let me throw all of them out, and you pick a couple if you feel like Bears, Browns, Rams, Chargers, Colts, Jaguars, Buccaneers, all at eight and a half. Uh, Chicago to me stands out. I don't know if you're putting them in. I low. think they're too high. 
I think if you're okay. putting Tampa and you're putting the Browns and you're putting the Jags okay, the, in the, the Jaguars, people – this dude, is like with Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars, I mean, that dude had a high ankle sprain with two months left in the season and the season tanked. He's yeah. going to be healthy. Right. Yeah. That's a 9-10 win I mean, team. That, that was my neck tattoo league. I mean, that I was know. my that was my squad, dude. They were on I, track, dude. They were like at nine one point were. last year. At one point last year, we were talking about them being Super Bowl contenders. They were like six and two or something. Yeah, they were on yeah. track for sure. Yeah, and to put the Bears in that category right away, I think that's a lot. That's a lot on what, Caleb Williams. What, where's the hate for the Rams coming from? Like the way they well, finished, the, the way greatest defensive the player year, of this generation just retired. retired. <laughs> but think of okay, we talked about this last year. The Rams had Aaron Donald, yes. But the rest of their defense was on vet minimum deals or rookie deals. Like all those dudes are taking the next step up. They had Kobe Turner, who could have been easily rookie defensive rookie of the year last year as a defensive lineman. Like you still have Puka Nakua, you still have Cooper Cup. Like you went out and got some stud offensive linemen to protect Matthew Stafford. Like I think that's low for the Rams. I think the Rams are still. I mean, McVay being what he is, and yes, you lost Aaron Donald, and that's going to hurt. There's no doubt about it. But I still think that's a pretty low number for the way the Rams finished the season last year. My instinct says you're right, that there's enough great coaching. They've got weapons. Matthew Stafford seems to be feeling good and healthy. And another couple other teams, too. The Browns always feel a little rickety just because of their history. But that's another team that has just sort of, with four different quarterbacks, they won 11 but games you, last you don't year. Know, you don't know if Deshaun Watson's the answer or the, or the right. problem. That's I think that's... I mean, that's why they're putting him in the middle of the that's pack. That's why they're right in the middle of the pack because they're like, it can go either way with that guy, right. right? Could he have elevated that team to winning the playoff games last year with the way they were playing, or is he going to be the reason they lose games? Nobody knows. He hasn't played a full football season in, what, three years now? Which yeah. is also scary to think. Like, that's a lot. Three years you haven't played in a full season? Like, it's a lot. And they added a game? <laughs> like, dude, it's a lot. There's so much money. I know. Yeah. There's so many eight and a halfs that are interesting. The other one that stands out to me is the last time Jim Harbaugh took over just kind of a weird situation, right? It was Booney's 49ers. Yeah, baby. So that, was a, that was a six-win team in 2010 that nobody was looking at really as a contender. And you guys more than doubled your win total in 2011 to, to 13 wins in Jim Harbaugh's first year. So to put the chart, I know the Chargers are like no, in transition. That's a tough mode, division, dude. You have to remember who they're playing. It's not even that. They don't have any weapons. That's another thing. They, have they don't no, have yeah. anything. They got rid of their receivers. They got rid of their running back. They're like, hey, we're going to restart this whole thing. Like, I think putting them at eight and a half is a fair assumption. Do I think they do well? Yeah, I think they do really well. I think they'll probably come in second, maybe third I don't in their division. Get, I, don't, I don't think they get to eight. Oh, I do. Dude, who's he throwing the football to? I think they're going to take care of that early. <laughs> That's you, but you, well, Malik, you Malik, the, Malik, neighbors, or I mean, there, there's, yeah. there's great guys. They can, that's one. Tell me what dude, the draft have could one easily. great receiver that can make this thing go. One singular in the NFL. Oh, no, I know what you're saying. I'm Quentin just Johnson's saying Johnson's not. He he's he can only play on the left side, right? He came from TC, which is still mind blowing thing that they drafted <laughs> a receiver in the first round that only knew how to play on one side of the football. <laughs> but like especially some of the other shit you hear at work, guys. Him. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I worry about. I worry about the Chargers being able to score. And we talk about that division, like you said, Booney, against Mahomes and against the the Raiders and against like the Ooh. AFC that is a scoring like division. I just worry about their ability to keep up and score. Steelers at eight, kind of just perpetually where they've been just, for dude, just throw them in the That's the same the thing. What's what's <laughs> Russ gonna do? Are we up or down? We're not sure. Like yeah. Just throw them in there. There's three teams at seven and a half. The Seahawks, the Saints, the Commanders. I might I get squirrely and put the Commanders over Good seven the and commanders. a half this year. Uh, they don't have anyone mm, to rush the passer. Man. Weak schedule. If they can get a dynamic, fun young quarterback. You're going to need a lot. You're going to need a lot to get up there, bud. <laughs> you're playing in a tough division. You play Philly. You play Dallas. You're playing but the it, Giants. But it feels like that division, to me, it feels like Dallas and Philly, like Dallas isn't better now than they were three months ago. They've lost key players. They've added nothing. No, but they're better than Washington. I agree, but I think <laughs> that's like what I'm two, They're better than coming, Washington today, so it's like... But ah. two teams are coming down the, the ladder, and they, there might be a win or two there that you could get in division. Uh, six and a half. We got the Vikings, the Raiders, the Cardinals, the Giants at six and a half. It's fair for all of them. Yeah, I agree with all that. Daniel Jones, you don't know if Daniel Jones is he's going to come back healthy or not. 
very similar situation. His offensive line, they did a nice job in free agency of getting some pieces in there to keep John him protected. But you lose you lose Saquon. <sighs> Huge right? loss. Saquon goes, Darren Waller retires. Right? Like so you you're you're down two weapons already in a room that their best receiver was a third round pick from Tennessee and Jalen Hyatt last year. Like so your weapons on offense again, you're down. You gotta score in this league. You're gonna rely on rookies to help you come score. It's a tough thing to do. It's a tough way to win in this league. Yep. The the Vikings number is a hundred percent predicated on can Sam Darnold get you some wins or whoever you draft, wherever you wind up drafting, right? Because if you just said, okay, if Jeff if Jefferson comes back, Addison, Hawkinson might not be ready for week one with um, the knee surgery. Highlight but doubtful, he'll be back. Ty Chandler, you, Aaron you've Jones. Got some, you've got, got some, some structure, structure around there, you. But can, listen, someone has to drive the car. And that's, can we yeah. please <laughs> stop saying Sam Darnold? It's not going to be Sam Darnold. Are we all in stop agreement it. on that? Are we all gonna, in agreement on that? He's going to start the year. He no, might start week one. I not. I'll put I'll put a stake in a beer bet. Stake that he in is a beer right here, starter. right now. That he is Let's the go. week one starter. Let's go. I'm in it. Booty, or Mac, you with me? You with me? That's or a you false bell. That's a false bell. Yeah, that's a false it's bell. No, by the way, it's a new. No, it's it's a new bell. Oh, that's it's a palms no, up too. I saw your oh, palms that's slip. Definitely palms. I 100 percent saw your palms slip. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but Mac, who are you siding with here? You have to pick Jay, a side. I'm siding with Jay. I think okay. Sam. Okay. By the way, they. They really like Sam Darnold, just like oh. Kyle Shanahan. There's an intrigue. Yeah, I'm sure. That, oh, yes. he's athletic. Totally. He's got a big arm. He was ruined you don't, by two bad you don't, franchises. You don't pay a guy $10 million not to at least come in and start week one. Yeah, no, Regardless yeah. of who you pick. Regardless of who you pick. You are going to say you're going to start week one, and you're going to drive it, and if the wheels fall off, we put the kid in. That's... That's what ten million dollars means. There's also a savior complex with some of these coaches, where it's like I can I can fix that former top five overall pick. I'm mm-hmm. the one that can, and I think Listen, Kevin O'Connell has some that, of that to him. Kyle Shanahan for sure does. I'm gonna pause you guys right there. I don't think that there's any of that anymore. I don't think they give a shit. I think if you're a bust, they're like, good. Now you're a backup. We'll just draft a guy next year. There is no more development. Jay, you and I talk about this. Well, they there's paid no him more. ten million. They paid him ten million. Who cares what they, they fucking paid him? Nick, they could have just run Nick. Andy Dalton made ten million dollars backing up in Chicago. The starters are making fifty. So when you Andy say Dalton ten, started. Andy Dalton started, like, started the season. Started yeah, but he was season. still a backup, wasn't he? Because he started and the season. That's how many? The no. All the all the bridge quarterbacks that we talk about are week nope. one starters. Nope. All of them. Telling right, you. because you roll them out there like, yeah, this is what we pay. And then as soon as things go off and the, the crowd starts chanting like the old gladiator days, like, kill him, right? Like, throw the kid <laughs> in, right? The, kill you know, him. him right? That's what happens. It's, you see that it's, how it's you saw a, the fans? Kill yeah. him. Dude, the fans were like this. With quarterbacks, yeah. the fans sit in the oh. stands like the old gladiator days like this. And as soon as things go in, <laughs> put him in, put the kid in, right? That's I exactly still see the kid happen. starting. All right. Well, I'll take my steak and a beer, a beer. he doesn't. Okay, five and a half. We have two teams at five and a half, Broncos and Titans. Poor that Broncos. feels a little disrespectful to the Titans after. They 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 added a head lot of interesting change. They head coaching the head coach. change. It's like, going to be interesting, Rabel's dude. gone. Culture's different. Like, there's a lot of question marks hey, there. Derek did Henry. Sign? Did he was, he just he's sign somewhere? He's an analyst with someone. Yeah, Who he was didn't it? get a he's coaching, not coaching gig. He no, didn't get a coaching gig. Um, hold on, I'm going to look this up. By the way, the Titans added Legereus Sneed, Calvin Ridley, Lloyd Cushenberry, a new starting center, Tony Pollard. They've they've you know they lost Derrick Henry and Mike Vrabel. Will Levis showed some flashes. He's a coaching and personnel consultant for the Cleveland Browns. That's right, the Browns. Good for him. And then uh, the four and a half group of Patriots and Panthers. Oh, wah wah. Poor Patriots. <laughs> I mean, the Panthers, they got their quarterback and nothing else. The, yep. the, the coach that drafted him is hey, gone. The GM they paid a guard gone. $100 million. Robert they Hunt. Mike Hunt. Robert Hunt. Excuse me. Robert, Robert Hunt. Hunt. $100 million bucks. Miami. Miami to Carolina, baby. Is that the Mike, only thing they did Mike, for Angel? Mike Hunt they got is rid a of totally Brian Burns. different player. Yeah. They got rid of uh, yep. Mike Brian Burns. What else did they do? <laughs> I, I don't know before. if they did a whole. I don't know if they did a whole lot more in free agency. Them in Dallas. Well, they they don't it. have any money. They don't have any money and they don't have any picks. It's crazy. Tough so, place to be in the tough. NFL. Mm. All right, so yeah. those are your your over under win totals. Do you guys want to do what do we got here? We're an hour into this podcast. We got um, there are some NFL rule changes too that we could touch on that are happening oh. here, and then we'll get to some dumb football questions. I'm curious where Booney stands on the hip drop because I think we may we may differ on this opinion. 
Mm-mm. But let's go so, into the hip drop tackle here, Mac. Yeah, so what's going to happen is the NFL is now going to start punishing hip drop tackle offenders for sure with fines on Monday. Yep. But it also right now it's kind of up in the air as to whether you could throw a 15-yard penalty for it. It is punishable on the field, but it it, it sounds like the league is leaning toward let's – be a little less flag happy with it because it's such a subjective bang bang thing and let's right. review it and find guys on monday but there's a lot of defensive players that are not happy about this it's just another tool out of their tool belt for trying to stop these offenses to be fair they hear this and they think they're going to get fined like that's the first thing guys think like they're like i'm going to make a tackle and then i'm going to get fined like everything is going to get fined now like it's just that's how they see it but here's my biggest issue you're asking for the ref to watch too much. You're like, hey, there has to be three points of contact. Dude, f- have you ever watched a game on the field? You go tell me what three points of contact you see. That's why this is, to me, I think everyone made a bigger issue out of it than it really is. They're just saying, hey, listen, we don't want the defender to come up from behind, jump in the air, and land on your legs. I understand what they're trying to say. At the same time, that's hard to do. Like Defensive players, you're just going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with this league. And that was one of the things that I learned in the NFL. You might not like the rules, but if you don't want to make millions, don't. Leave. These are the rules. They're set by the owners. The guys who own this fucking league came down and said, don't do this again or we're not going to pay you. Right? You just have to deal within your constraints. And I don't agree with a lot of the rules either. Like a lot of the chopping and the cutting, I was kind of like, man, that sucks. That was big leverage for us. Like we used to be able to cut guys on the back end. It would open up huge lanes. The minute they got rid of that, we were like, shit. But we weren't sitting out there like going to Twitter, going, oh, it's stupid. It's stupid. We we're just like, all right, well. <laughs> all right. Our coaches were like, this is stupid. Yeah. We're going to have to deal with it. That's one of the things that kind of drives me nuts about this league is everyone's quick to bitch all the time. God, just God, shut up. I don't fucking care. They don't care. You don't care. God. My God. But at the same time, I get it. We're trying to keep people healthy. And Hey, guys, if you're taking all the top receivers out of the NFL, guess what? It's not going to look very good. And, quarter- get, and quarterbacks, too. Like, I get the whole, like, roughing the passer thing. Like, the minute it happened, I was pissed, yeah. But then you see a team lose their quarterback for a while, and you're like, yep, I'd be pissed, too, if I was paying that guy $50 million and some guy hit him well, late dude, and he got knocked out for the season. I'd be real pissed. To that point, it, scoring is down compared to, yes. like, five years oh, ago. Yeah. Like four points four a game points. or something. Yeah. Here, I mean, I, when I first heard it too, I was kind of was like, man, that sucks. But then I just, in my brain, categories, categorically just put it as the same thing. It's the same thing as a horse collar tackle. Right. Like just it's, it. it's in my brain, it's the exact same thing as a horse collar tackle because as long as the end of the day, the rule change is made for player safety, I'm probably going to get on board with it. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm going to get on board with it because. When you lose a guy like Mark Andrews for the entire season, essentially, like that sucks, right? That that sucks, and I'm not, I'm not, and I think people made Logan Wilson to be way more of a villain than it needed to be when it oh, happened. Oh yeah, but at the end of the day, what drives the NFL? Fantasy football. I in, mean, in, in any more money, fantasy football, scoring. So the league is going to protect that asset, and if this is in that realm, I'm, I'm here for. It. I mean, you think about a guy like Delaney Walker ended his career yeah right a hip drop tackle ended his career right and so as long as it's geared towards player safety i'm totally okay with it i think i think it's going to be a learning period it's going to be an adjustment period but i do think eventually at the end of the day it's going to be looked at as a horse collar type tackle it's going to have to be a clear and obvious hip drop tackle right i think that's going to have to come back to it as well is if it's a bang bang maybe it was maybe it wasn't not a flag no. right let the league deal with it on the back end but if it's a clear and obvious like you see the the plays they put up at the league office where it's like yeah dude, that's about that was as bad. black and white like it's black and white yeah that should be probably a 15 yard penalty personal foul hip drop i want to see what the refs make for a like a hand signal for it like, you know what I mean? Like, because there's like, I want to know, it's yeah. like, hip, is the drop, th- tackle, number 55. <laughs> right? I, like, I want to see, I want to see the hand gestures that the rest will make for the hip drop tackle. <laughs> hey, it'll probably just the, be a personal The whole foul. Hockey Lee family is going to be at family yeah. gatherings, just pra- <laughs> practicing. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> like the first one that's going to have to call it, too. The first one that's going to have to It's called it. Sean. I, I want to see it. Sean, be I calm. See it. Be calm. Be calm if you're the first. Yeah. No, it'll be I a personal it, foul. 
yeah. I think from like a defensive perspective, what what it, it, like if you put yourself in the shoes of a cornerback, for instance, so Mark Andrews is going to be fifty pounds heavier than most cornerbacks, and he catches a pass up the seam or in the flat somewhere. Okay, if if he has moved pa- like if he's in front of me, okay, I can maybe use some sort of normal technique, right? But if I'm trailing him, how am I supposed to take someone down that's 50, 60 pounds heavier Swipe than his I legs. am? Swipe his legs with your hands. Just sweep the leg. You, yeah. <laughs> they're they're basically the asking for a very realistic Show thing. No like, they made us stop chopping each other because our ankles and knees were so bad. Like, everybody was blowing out a knee or an ankle, and they were like, okay, listen. You guys don't understand that if we don't have a league, nobody's making money. So we're going to have to take this away from you because you guys have gotten so villainous with each other. Like, dude, there were times where you would pull and a linebacker would cut you in the hole. And you were like, are you serious? Oh, God, that was the worst. You're like, you serious <laughs> with this shit right now? Or like Clay Matthews, you don't know how Clay made his money? When he would come and you would hit him on stutter, he would cut you. And you were like, are you serious right now? So they were like, all right. We got to get rid of all this. So they got rid of it. It's the same thing, and I see it just as Jay does. And I'm sure you like, thought I was going to be upset, but it's the same thing. I it's did. a horse collar. Like, in my mind, the minute somebody gets tackled like that, you're like, that just feels dirty, doesn't it? Like, pull him down a different way, hit him from the side, do something. Just don't fall on his legs. Like, it's too Clay much Matthews, by the way, was the, he was the poster boy. for so The NFL has done a few of these where, all right, so this is a new thing. And remember, it was like eight or ten years ago, and they said, okay, when you sack a quarterback, so we know you can't go high, you can't go low, those are established, but now you also can't put all of your body weight on a yeah. quarterback when you're tackling him. Cost him the and game. poor Clay Matthews, man, had about three or four that season, just perfect form form tackle sacks right around a quarterback's waist and mm. kind of drove him into the ground, 15-yard penalty, too much body weight on Dude. whoever. That one against the Vikings cost him the game. Remember that? It was like yeah. the fourth quarter. I remember that to this day, and that's the one of the things where I was like, that's questionable. That's brutal. Like, I remember he hit Kirk so clean, and they threw that flag, and he was like, it's time to retire. He's like, that's, yeah. that's my time, guys. I'm out of here. Because he was a psycho, man. To be able to play defensive end and pick your hand up and go play linebacker and drop into coverage and, like, be one of the most ferocious rushers off the edge, like, y'all don't even know what that dude was yeah. about. Like, his family was ingrained in this league. Yeah. Still that is. shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, just cousin or whoever it is, is still one of the best tackles in the league for uh long time Atlanta. yeah so and, Jake, his, Jake, and his uncle Jake, played 40 Jake, years Jake together Matthews, like his cousin oh, yeah. yeah bruce matthews like dude there's some serious and so when that dude played this for real but like you think about how this league and i we see it and it is player safety they're constantly looking at this stuff like guys we're, we're killing each other out here like we have to somehow taper this down <laughs> like we need you for 18 weeks not two it's hard yeah. They also a couple other things, and we'll get to dumb football questions. But teams are now going to get a third challenge if you just get one successful in your That's first silly. two. I don't like that. Why? What's wrong? With I that? think you should have to get both of them right. I agree with that. That was cool. Like you have to earn it. Which you got to be like never happens. By the way, yeah, I think exactly. That's Which was like it was like man. They got another challenge. Damn, they're smart upstairs. That's when you know the upstairs are watching for real. They're like, hey, it's an incomplete. Review that. Review that. So Booney's not like happy it. with the extra. I'm challenge. all right with it. I'm, I'm good. I'm with all right with it. it. Yes, and then yes. and then the other one that I don't know if it's official yet, but there's been some buzz this week that finally the NFL is going to allow the press box. If there's always like an eye in the sky official in the press box that has access through an earpiece to the on field refs, that 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 official is going to be able to overrule calls for roughing the passer or like if it's something objectively missed where. We we throw a flag for the quarterback getting hit in the head, but then the guy upstairs watches the replay and is like, actually, he didn't get hit in the head. They can now buzz down and overturn game-changing 15-yard penalties, which I thought, if you're going to throw a 15-yard flag for something that's as tenuous as roughing the passer, someone should be able to look at a replay and be like, oh, actually, that looked bad, but really it wasn't it wasn't contact to the helmet or whatever. I'm so cool they're going to address that. I completely yeah. agree. Like, we live in an era where everything's filmed. There's an eye on everything. Yeah. Like, l- allow Big Brother, the eye in the sky, to make sure that those type of calls don't outcome, don't completely, like, affect the outcome of the game. Like, yeah, why, why do don't idiots let like us, we're, like, you know, half-buzzed watching the game on a 70-inch flat-screen TV in 4K definition, but we don't give access to the NBC at Slow Mo Replay to the ref right, in right. real time? You What'd you see like, in real time, stupid? What'd you see? But, What'd you see? <laughs> but, yeah, it, but it's also like Booney said, like if you've ever been like 
even being Don't. in a stadium, it's hard. Like it's you realize how fast the guys are moving compared to on TV. Like being seen alive, being down on the field. You don't understand, like, unless you're right there, how fast things are happening in front of you. And to ask a ref to be looking at 22 guys and see what's going on, like, it's just not fair to them. Like Boone said, you can't ask them to do too much. This alleviates a lot of that. I love this rule. I'm I do too. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, we've been talking about this for years. This needed mm-hmm. to happen. There we needed a, it. There was a game, a baseball game, like 12 or 15 years ago. And the, there's a Detroit Tigers pitcher named Armando Galarraga. And he was never like a top Cy Young Award pitcher. But this dude had a perfect game going with two outs in the ninth inning. And there was a ground ball and a bang-bang play at first base. Kind of bang-bang. Called him safe, right? The umpire. And it, it was like boom, boom. And watching real time, it looked like he was out. But the umpire just kind of got nervous or something and called him safe. with Again, with two outs in the ninth inning to break up a perfect game. And of course, within 10 seconds, they show the high def, this is probably early high definition TVs. This dude gets the, the umpire, Jim Joyce was his name, handlebar mustache. That dude got death threats for weeks and weeks because he's the only guy in the world that doesn't get access to that replay, right? Like these yep. refs, we we think officiating is getting worse in sports. No, the TVs are getting better. Yeah. The, the high definition is getting <laughs> <Yes>. better. <laughs> Hey, we have they're probably unprecedented- better now than they were 50 it, it years is. ago. We, but- <laughs> as a fan, you have unprecedented access to everything all the time, all at once. Like, it's just, it's not fair to those dudes. Those dudes don't know. They're operating in real time. They have to keep the flow of the game going. They got to make sure there's not a scuffle after the play, get the ball set, get the chain set. Like, there's a lot. The, I mean, in a, in a perfect world for me, the on field refs would never call a penalty. The on-field refs would be there strictly to keep the flow of the game and the order of the animals in line, right? Everything else is done from upstairs. Everything else is that. done from upstairs. I'm not right? against you that. You have you have flag. You have an entire officiating crew upstairs that can see everything in real time, and they get a 15 second window after a play to have either a play a, a foul called or they can call it in real time because the camera is right there on it and they can double check it real quick. And other than that, the refs on the field, their only job is to announce to the world and keep the pace of play going. That, in my perfect world, that's what the NFL needs to get to because these calls are becoming way too subjective. But it is because it it is so fast, and you're watching guys that are backpedaling, watching a receiver run while a defensive back is chasing them, and they're literally backpedaling on the sideline watching this in real time. Like The way these refs move, it is really fun to watch. At times, Like if you ever like watch them, they're constantly counting, their thumbs up in each other, their side thumb in each other. Like There's a million things they have to tell each other. And then, oh, hey, there's the play. Like There's a lot going on. So having somebody upstairs that could be like, hey, listen, you guys don't have to worry about any of this. Just keep the flow going. Keep the fights down and spot the fucking ball and let's go. Like That's how this game goes super, super fast. Yeah. Bring back the review clock, too. Right, bring that, dude. So many times last year, these reviews are taking way too long. Oh yeah, that was right. Like, dude, you commercial. Get, you, you get, like, oh. you, get a, you get a minute and a half, and if you don't have a decision six, by then, call stands. Seven, seven, six, five. <laughs> oh god, oh god. Oh. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Make <laughs> complete, a decision. Complete. <laughs> uh, all right, boys. Dumb football questions. We got a few coming in here from the YouTube section. We've got we've got some people. I think we're going to include whenever you guys leave a comment on the Apple Podcast page with your favorite random offensive lineman, we will include Obscure. those in down football questions. Yes. Immortal Eagle says my favorite random offensive lineman is John Wojciechowski. He was first team All Big Ten his senior year at Michigan State, so he was an offensive lineman back in like the. So he's currently sixty years old. Went to Michigan State back in. <laughs> The Jesus. early to mid 1980s, John Wojciechowski. That a boy. Uh, what, what a name, name, too. Right? That's Dude, an that's, all lineman name. That's, that's, that's that, Wojciechowski. Like, I think he's in the see Packers him. front office. Is this the same guy? He's the director of player personnel for the Packers. I was going to say the name sounds very familiar. Dude, okay. I think we've, yep. I, I think we've talked guy? to him. Yeah. I've talked. I've, I've 100% talked to him. I'm like, dude, I know this guy. Yes. That's awesome. Wait, there's also it. a there's also a jazz musician named John Wojciechowski too. So I don't know. Maybe Ooh. this dude specializes maybe. in the jazz flute when he's not evaluating off the jazz flute. The jazz flute. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the guy. He's from Detroit, Michigan. Played at Michigan State, undrafted, 1986. He's a Buffalo Bill. Jeremiah, hey. you guys. Mm, yep. Drafted the, the year before I was born. The Jeez. boys. The boys in blue. 
And then Chicago Bears, 1987 to 1993. During the Grinded gym, he out. played with Jim Harbaugh. Grinded, Grinded it out, baby. That a boy. That's a great oh, name. A great offensive line name. John Wojciechowski. And then Iloso3135 says his favorite random offensive lineman is Mark Stepnoski, the 90s Cowboys starting center. Yeah, I remember Mark him. Mark Stepnoski. I remember Dude. Mark as well. God, What's another great Dirty offensive lineman? Dirty grinder. Oh, yeah. Dude, he, I, was he the one that like taped his whole forearm? Yes. Who was I'm that? pretty sure. I, I mean, there was, I can't remember. There was, a, there was an old Dallas center that like, the wrist tape went like halfway up to the elbow. He definitely had awesome. huge chunks of tape on his wrist. Yes. And he had the <laughs> flowing the flowing hair as yes, well. Yes, that was him. That was him that just had the Marks. massive forearm tape. <laughs> Mark Stepnaski. Let's go. Okay, from let's see here. From Aaron on the YouTube comments. How tired do players get toward the end of games? How does fatigue factor in toward the end of football games? Mm. Mm. tired i mean fatigue definitely is a factor like i I mean it's i think any any player would lie to you and say fatigue doesn't play a factor but the difference is can you push through the fatigue better than the other person right everyone's tired it's a physical game right it's a physical game and if you're running like a two-minute situation as an offensive lineman you're gassed right like it's you're, you're you're toast and it's game on the line can you gut it out but so much of that comes back to like how well have you prepared, how well are you ready for that moment, and how clearly can you mentally think? Because the body, you can will the body to do anything, right? Like, it, and I say that tongue in cheek a little bit, but like if you're an elite athlete and you're in the high pressure situation, you can will your body to do crazy things, crazy things when you think you can't do it anymore, and I, I can't pass that one more time, my legs are gonna give out. Mentally, you can say, like, you can shove that inner bitch down and be like, nope, not happening. But where guys. This is fail, me on like the 30 minute Peloton rides, minute yeah, 27. Yeah. Come on, Phil. You, you got, got this, this, right? Dennis like, Morton's you, got you. He's got, he's got yeah, you. Yeah, 100%. He's a Dennis it's, Morton rider. <laughs> I think the, the big, the, the, the fatigue makes a coward of us all mentally is the coach. I can't remember what coach said that, but like, that was a thing because it's not as much you can will the body, but as soon as you let the mind go, you're toast. As soon as you let the fatigue hit your brain and you're worried about how tired you are and how poor me and you forget the blitz pickup or you forget the cadence or you jump off sides, that's the bigger factor in the fatigue side of the game than the actual physical tiredness, in my opinion. Dude, the only time you're going to feel tired is like the minute you sit down after the game because when you're in that game, your heart is racing. Like, yeah, sure, there are times where you're in two-minute – You'll get to the line and you'll take a quick second and you'll be like, damn, I'm breathing really hard. But then all of a sudden you hear Ricky Ricky and you're like, okay, I'm in it. I'm back in it. Like, yep. Yeah. And you're gone. Like you don't, when you're on the field, there's so much going on and there's so many checks in your brain that the last thing you're thinking is, am I tired? Am I got, do I have this? Like nobody is ever in the huddle. Like I'm, I'm gas, dude. Like it's normally like, Hey, where are we screwing up? Now the weird thing is you're on the field and you're fine. The minute you come off the sideline, yeah, you're breathing. You're <sighs> high hawk coach. <sighs> like you just don't think about it when you're out there because you're so in like a panic mode, but an excitable mode and then like a thinking mode that you're like, nothing else matters in the world right now. For the next three hours, four hours, however long this is, nothing's going to matter. Now, when you sit down after that game, I can't express to you the level of like, holy shit factor that your body is like wow i am tired now and then you're like i'm gonna need like 10 minutes to just sit here somebody give me a gatorade before i pass out like it's it's insane but in the the moment and then the media comes in with microphones and cameras that's why you see guys so (laughs) mad sometimes because you're like dude we just did two minute and you're asking me about it and i can't even remember what we did because i am just so gassed right now and they're like so on that two minute with third down they saw that blitz why don't you guys pick it up and you're like I don't even know. I didn't, yeah. I don't know. I haven't watched the game. I don't know. I'm tired. Leave me alone. Like worst time to interview me. Wait till tomorrow. But it How is. How would you assess your chances in the NFC North after that loss? Yeah. <laughs> Three minutes left in the third quarter. I noticed that you guys ran a play action. Do you remember why? You'd be like, what? I don't even know who I am right now. Guy? What are you talking about? We played a game. <laughs> So unconscious right now. I, I, what? We ran power thirty five times is, today, lady. Leave me alone. It is wild that you guys. You're just like, you're you're being asked to be gladiators for three hours, and then 
immediately reintegrate into society in the locker room yeah. and back home with your families nice. and then nice you and then you add all these like probing media members like idiots like me wanting to know you know hey uh, do you feel like your season's over because you just <laughs> lost an overtime right. game right. Yeah. what does this mean Blood's, for your chances now that you've lost slowly the last simmering yeah. it's been boiling for four hours hey. and it's still just on a slow Dude. simmer and <laughs> i will say this after a game win or loss seeing the kids like all the kids of the family, nothing more excitable, right? Like you're super excited. The minute you see the media, you're like, God damn it, go away from me. Like just, it could be some kid coming up to you, hanging on your arm forever, and you're just yeah. like, whatever, dude. It's super fun. The minute somebody comes up like, so uh, how would you think that game went? You're instantly like, really? Really? Just, I think, especially really? with football players, I think it's, it's easy to because you don't get as much access to football players. There's 53 of you on a roster. The media time is limited during the week and stuff. So it's like sometimes it's easy to forget for fans and for media. These are human beings that have lives. Oh, dude, I'll never forget. On the I used to cover baseball before, probably between my stints covering football. But I was a, a beat writer covering the Minnesota Twins, and I'd be in the the clubhouse for two hours before the game, and you had all this access. And there's 162 games, and so you're just in there all the time. And I'll never forget, there was a catcher named Ryan Domit. Used to play for the Pirates for a few years, kind of a power-hitting catcher, and the Twins had him for a couple of years. And he was a bad defensive catcher, and he dropped. There was a pop-up in one of these innings, just straight up the phone booth, you know, and Ryan bats his glove, and he sits underneath it, and he drops this pop-up, and it leads to like a seven-run inning for the opposing team, and the Twins lose the game. And of course, all of us media, you go down there and find out kind of what happened and how the loss happened and you're writing stories and all this stuff. And so we all gather around this poor dude sitting at his locker, right? And he just, he dropped a freaking pop-up to lose this game. And the other reporters are kind of looking at me because I would usually ask the first question. I'm like, you guys are like, seriously? And they're like, go, go, that's good. That was good. <laughs> do it, do and it. And so he kind of, he kind of like it. half turns Pursuit. around. He's like, he's like, what do you guys want? And I'm like, oh, shit. And I said, Ryan, hey, man, um, just on that pop up there in the seventh inning, you know, what uh, what kind of happened from your standpoint? He goes, what the fuck do you think happened? And I was like, <laughs> uh, uh, like, what do you I mean? There's a human be like you're a human being asking another human being. You just screwed up at your job and cost your team a game. What happened there? And he's like and he said the right thing, which is. Go bleep yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love he it. He came up the next day and he apologized. He's like, right. Dude, I'm and, sorry. But that's I the was thing. Mad. Like, that's the yeah. but that's that's the thing. Like all of us at one point in time, the blood cools down and you get out of this fight or flight mode and you can actually think and understand. Like, I get that the media has a job and I totally respect what you guys do. Like it's important. It's you guys are a lot of the times kind of like the the peer into the team and the, the fans yes, want to know like, more about how what's going we... on. But I just I do think there's a time and a place to understand and and the good journalists get it. The yeah. good reporters understand when you can press and when to push in and when to chase something and when to understand like, hey, let's let this dude cool down for a hot second and revisit this on Monday. Yes. Like even the best of the best, Mahomes. Right? Mahomes has that huge blow up about the the penalties and Offsides, how it's costing yep. games and and then like because again the blood is hot, right? You just came off the most intense. And then the next day he's able to be like, I was wrong, I regrouped. Like that's 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 human nature, but just in a world of a twenty four hour news cycle and the things that we do, like it's just hard for it's hard to put that away as quickly as some guys think you can after a game like that. Mackie, going into that, obviously you knew what the answer was going to be. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. Do you ask the question if you could do it again? Would you ask oh. the same question? Yeah. No. See, I would, but that's I would... kind of you poking, right? It like, is. No. When oh, you I guys told... come up to us and ask us stupid questions, like yeah. right after the game, I find that unfair, you. and I that feel like the people. Moment... That was my last year as a beat writer, and that was it. Was kind of second half of the season. They were going to lose like ninety five games, and I literally decided in that moment I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be the one that is asking that question. And even like on the elevator ride back up to the press box with some of the other writers, I was ranting to them like, "Why do like why does that question even need to be asked?" Well, we right. need the quotes for the story. It's like I see you know in my mind I made the decision. I'm going to make a living in this industry not needing to ask that question to that poor guy in a 96 loss season that has a family, you know, 
Which what is happened? fair. He made a huge I, mistake and he dropped right. a pop up like yeah. does he need to answer for it right. in the locker room after like in some situations I think it's important for players to answer for a screw up or a failure for so sure. that their teammates no. aren't taken but the there next are there's, day. there's context involved. Right. Yeah. Like you can't ask a guy a simple question like hey routine fly ball dropped it what happened bud like the answer is always going to be the same. Well, yeah. I mean you yeah, know what that answer it's, is. It's, it's a that. rhetorical question. Hey. Right. Why did you did you know you jumped off sides when it was important to not jump off sides? It's like, no, <laughs> I had no idea. I had no clue I was not supposed to do that. What like, happened come on, ball start. What happened I thought on that it was ball on one, start? Stupid. Well, that's like my favorite press conference is uh, Baylor and BYU a couple of years ago in the tournament when they're like, the how does how does BYU out rebound Baylor? Oh, that one was like, Tor- 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 like, Prince. Well, yeah, Tor- Prince. what like, you well, do is what you do is you go up, and when the ball misses the rim, you grab it and you bring it back down. And they had more of those than us. Yeah. Like, it's just like you know the answer. <laughs> that's to being a smart ass. I like man. that. I like that. Like, yeah, Dude, he's, like he's still that's the why lead, they, man. be like, if someone's like, "Hey, how did you jump off sides there?" Be like, "Well, when someone moves." Before the ball is snapped, the ref will throw this little yellow piece of laundry onto the field and blow his stupid little whistle. Yeah. And he's going to make these hand motions and announce that offsides 71. Which Sometimes it's I illegal left. procedure. Sometimes yeah, I it's... left before the snap was gone, and that's how I jumped off sides. That's yeah. how you I think that's how, that's, that's how that's every athlete should start responding to those. Like <laughs> very every sarcastically, start just very like matter of the fact. Like you want to be matter of the fact and ask what yeah. happened. Here's what happened. Here's a play by play of how this went down. Now, letter if of the a, law. Now, if it's a quarterback throwing an interception, I think there's a there's a now he might be pissed and might not want to answer, but. I kind of want to know, as a fan, as media, was it a missed route? Was it a bad route? Was it? Like, but it, it they're but never going to tell you. We don't know. We don't know. You won't and know. They're not going to the tell tape. you, right? And even it, if they yeah. did, they're not going to tell you that the receiver have, ran the wrong route. That's bad. If he's worth, That's if bad he's for worth business. Shit. If he's worth yeah. the shit, yeah. If he's yeah. worth the shit, he's not going to be a bus thrower in the moment. No, Andrew that, Luck was my like, favorite because Andrew Luck was the opposite. You could see like, he had like ribs sticking out of his jersey, oh, yeah. bleeding my in fault. his offensive line. He's like, I got to be better. <laughs> I should. <laughs> blood he's literally <laughs> coughing up blood. He's like, I should have thrown it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, give me an IV quick. He's got a, Dude, he was. He's got a baddest. walking boot, walking boot, and a crutch out. And he's like, I mean, if I should have just got rid of the ball in point four seconds instead of one, I just, I mean, that, that free runner should have never got there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I got one more dumb football question from the Bacchinator. The, the Bacchinator, Bacchinator on YouTube. We got some good names today. It's great, yeah. So he says, we got Immortal Eagle, and we have the Bacchinator today. It's great. <laughs> How much money would you guys have given up or given back to win a Super Bowl in your careers? I didn't make a whole lot, so probably probably none. Probably none. I'm being honest. I mean, honest. I mean, I made, I made good money. Don't get me wrong. I never... I, I made good money, but I never signed a huge deal or had guaranteed money. And like that, that money that I made in the league is what I'm living off of right now. And it's what's allowing me to build my business. And so like looking back on it, I don't, I don't think I would have given up anything because that was my livelihood and I only played six years. And so truthfully, like as great as it would have been to win a Super Bowl, it would have put me in a, if I would have to give money back, it would have put me in a much tougher spot to raise my family and do what I want to do right now, like objectively. So, yeah, call me selfish, whatever. But I sorry, wouldn't, I would. I wouldn't sorry, Vikings, that. Bills, Chargers, Panthers fans. But Jay he wouldn't have done it. Your city to win he wouldn't have done it. <laughs> sorry, doesn't give a crap about the fans. But that's fine. If I would have made twenty six million dollars, <laughs> sure, we're having a different conversation. But I did yeah. not. <laughs> Alex, would oh, you give any money back? Buddy? Millions, I would. Yeah, really, for sure. Yeah, you have no idea that how makes, much I chase. That checks that. out. That checks I, out though, because you dude, made millions. That I would checks have, out. Yeah, that checks out. I, I, I would. I gave a lot to, to for that that Super Bowl. Like just one ring, and I always heard Tom Rathman talking about his rings, and I always just wanted one. And he'd be like, "I keep them, keep them over here, and I keep them over here." And I was like, "Jesus <laughs> Christ, how many you got, dude? Like, can I have one?" He'd be like, "I got one over here." I'm, okay, got it. All right, like, Tom, we get a guy. Yeah. The year that we lost that Super Bowl, I was training that summer, and Kalecio Semele came into our gym. And he had on his ring, and uh, I would have given a lot for that ring. 
that thing was the most massive ring I've ever seen in my life. And it, it had 140 diamonds in it. I would have given a lot for that ring. I'm sorry. Like at the end of the day, all of this is great and it's super fun and the journey was fun. But to be, call yourself a champion, I think that is the ultimate level of fuck you. No matter what anyone says to you in your life, you could throw that ring up and be like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? I don't know. I don't know about sacrifice or discipline or what it takes to lead or be on a team or do all like, because no matter what you do, people are like, did you win a Super Bowl? Like, no. It's like, oh, it sucks. <laughs> Thanks. Bo Booney's at the Booney's at Kowalski's, the grocery store. Yeah. That, did it's you terrible. win a Super Bowl there? That, yeah, that man? checks out, though. That checks out. No. You made millions, you'd give millions. Checks out. I made hundreds of thousands, would not give millions. <laughs> but you, I mean, dude, we all gave a lot. We gave, we gave literally bone and blood. Like we gave yeah, as I much mean, as we could and gave it up for the cause. And at the end of the day, when you fall short, it sucks. It really, really sucks. Like I know people say that a lot. You're like, oh, okay, whatever. But like you stop after that clock hits triple zero and you turn around and you're like, all the work was for nothing. You're like, that's what it equates to. Because the coaches tell you right away, hey, Shitty year. Go home. You're like, okay. See all that April. pain. All that pain. All that April. nothing. Yeah. All that film, all those notes, all that waking up at 4.30 every day. To, you're like, that's it? Go home. You make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> you loser. Thanks. No, literally, they walk you out like, you're a loser. We're losers. We need to be better. We suck. Yeah. Find, find your replacement. They don't sugarcoat shit in the NFL. That's why I there's love only, it. I, there's only one. Yeah, there's only one happy team at the end of the year. That's it. That's it. There's only one. And then, then you walk back in the next year, and they've got the poster of the Lombardi in the corner of the room again. You're like, all right. Dude, I got to be honest. Here we go. I would almost rather lose week 18 and call it a year than go to the Super Bowl and lose again because there is no level of pissed offness because in that moment, everyone's like, you control your own destiny, and we were like, we got it. And then you lose it, and you're like, wow, I'm a shitty football player. Like, you're like, so, I made uh, it all the way to the uh, you, uh, you guys had the lead in the fourth quarter there. Did you guys, <laughs> yeah. um, you guys so what, think you were going to hang dude, on there? What I can tell you what right happened? now, <laughs> that media had never seen a more pissed off team because I remember when I came in the locker room, there was shit thrown everywhere. <laughs> and I mean everywhere. Like That's why it is so heartbreaking to go all the way down to the wire and be like, yeah, you're just not good enough. Sorry, you suck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys, you guys, uh, you know, when the lights went out there and you had the delay, how much did that affect you guys' your ability to plug it back? The crazy thing was the lights helped us. Like everyone thought we did that because we were down, and that's when we started to come back, and that's when everybody was like, "Did you guys have something to do with the lights?" <laughs> And I was at that point that I lost my helmet for the year. Like, it went through a wall. The lockers were getting ripped out. Like, it's rough, man. It's rough when people tell you you suck in the heat of the moment at the biggest moment of your life. And they're like, you just suck. <laughs> what do you want to say? <laughs> Thanks, guys. You blew it. That was rough. You blew it. That was rough. Is your dumb football questions. Uh, click that like button and the subscribe button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Five-star rating, positive review to help us grow on Apple and Spotify. And be on the lookout for a Saquon Barkley, does he still have it, film review on the YouTube Ooh. channel as well. Silly right. question. See you guys. Got the juice.